Hi, welcome to this episode of Culture of Paint. We're going to be taking a look at what's caught our eye over the last couple of weeks in the miniatures painting world. For our main topic, we're going to talk about some of the smaller producers and content creators that we've enjoyed sort of buying from or consuming from this year, which hopefully you guys will find interesting as well, particularly with you know Crimbo coming up and stuff. And we'll close the show out as usual, taking a look at what the hashtag paint cultists have been up to. Now, Culture of Paint's aimed at a mature audience, and we might use explicit language and discuss adult themes. Now let's talk about paint. Right, talking about paint and trying not to sneeze and cough and splutter our way through an episode. We are back in the chats there. Everyone's there. Right. Hi, everyone. I'm Henry, and joining me as usual are Matt, Andy, and Rich. Hello, chaps. All right. Or fib, because we're not, but just say we are. Okay. Yeah. What are we? All, all well. Ill. On it. I'm grand. Hundo. I, I escaped the floods. <laughs> yeah, and you made it through, right? Andy was in a dinghy, well, a dinghy last night. I found out today where I was. I wouldn't have got home at all. So I'm grateful to be here with a, a cup <laughs> no of tea. floods. Yeah, yeah. I was in Devon and I it should be two hours and it took me seven hours to get home what? and I literally How did you know was driving floods. Because Matt was in the M twenty five. Oh Matt, Matt. There was floods. Oh. Obviously you knew you were in it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> um yeah. yeah, but where where I was is fully written off today, boats and everything. Um so. I, whale whale tussler in the chat. Very much enjoying your look, Rich. Call me Ishmael. Oh, rather fittingly. Um, so Fisherman's yeah, Rich, friend. Like headlines, really. <laughs> Rich has quit the hobby and has took up fishing. Yeah. Uh, Matt's got one of the greatest ideas I've ever seen for a hobby entry, but I don't know if he wants to show it yet. Um, and uh, we're going to steal it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Got to keep it secret. Keep it safe. Um, nice to see the usuals in the chat and a few new ones. And today, or tonight rather, um, we're going to do an episode that we did last year, uh, which is the small producers. So obviously. There's major producers in the hobby we all use for products. Um, I'm sure everybody knows who they are, but there's a ton of these sort of cottage industries, um, you know, creators and producers, particularly around larger scale miniatures, um, you know, and, and you know, painting channels and all things like that. So we just want to shine a little bit of a light on them um, because, you know, this time of year is massive for them. Um, so, yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy some of the, pardon me, some of the things we'll pick. But... It's been a few weeks, only two weeks since the last one, which makes a change. Um, so what's been going on? What we got, Matt? Oh, helps if I bring the thing up, doesn't it? <laughs> Not really, because I've probably forgotten to download the link anyway. Here we so. go. So first up. Who's going to pick this one? Oh, it's me first. Whoa. Nice. So this is uh, one of my, if not my favorite hobby account. Uh, this is Carrie from Iron Sleet. Uh, Colty is the account. Um, yeah, I just love everything this person does. This is how I want to hobby and be happy uh, and at the moment they are painting a ton of second edition 40k or road tra trader era 40k orcs um and actually we're going to talk about something kind of semi-related to that later on i think as one of the picks um, what uh yeah. i was gonna say i've never seen this model before what year like 1920 Ooh. early 90s so actually it's it's one of the the early I can get the books out there behind me it's one of the the early orc freebooters um, but there's a small, oh. well, there's a few different people actually produce things like the the, um, the plastic arms and weapons because obviously there's uh -huh. there's still a fair few amount of the metal models knocking around, but mm. a lot of a lot of them from this era, orcs, marines, all that had the plastic arms, mm. and they've often perished or broken or, or gone wherever. So there's a few people that produce ones that you can use um, to stick on them, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, this is a this is a, an old miniature, almost probably as old as some of the miniatures they're planning to re-release for the old world, I imagine. Um, mm. So good to see them. <laughs> good to see them coming back out with it. Um, that, is a, that is a cuss. Yeah. I love yeah. I love this account. Go go and check it out. It's incredible. Hey, it's, it's called Old it's World everything. for a reason, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> old world, old stock. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, the tattoos are cool, aren't they, Simone? They're um. Uh, yeah, this this stripy trousers it just makes life better, doesn't it? Mm. Um, yeah, perfect really. green. But we will talk about uh, old miniatures, I think, a little bit later on. Um, so that's my pick. There's been a, as usual, there's been a ton of stuff um, coming out. I always, always find this a good. There's like good chunks of the year for 
for content. And I feel like we're we're in one at the minute. Is it because the weather's got miserable and everything? Yeah, maybe. A hobby. It's my yeah. favourite time of year for hobby. I love it, like mm. Christmas time, because no one wants to do anything. So I just get to do some painting. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it's, uh, nice. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good times. And this, yeah, I can't recommend this count enough. And the whole sort of Iron Sleep crew. Um, yeah, big, Best. big, ins- big, big inspirations. Mm. Um, yeah, right. Oh, congratulations on the pike, Rich. Did you catch a big old piker? Did you? <laughs> I didn't catch a big one, but I caught my first ever one. So there thank you. Are, Who yeah. said that? We know uh, Rich in the chat. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's my yeah. first first yeah. one. So cheers, mind. We'll do an episode down from the canal with you soon. <laughs> yeah. Um, just recording it. <laughs> fish, fishing and chatting hobby. Uh, right. What's up next, Matt? Ah. Oh. Did not expect this. Right. Bear with me on this one. So I didn't even know Same this green. Was... You've done your Marines. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a good point, which I didn't realize. I didn't even know that this was a thing. So the reason I picked this is because, you know, there are like elements of a hobby that you don't even know or, or like or realize are a thing. Mm-hmm. I, and I bit the you know, ADD brain where I find something and go on this insane like rabbit warren deep dive to find out as much about it as humanly possible. There is an entire section of miniatures hobby where they buy Hot Wheels cars out of the packet they then take the insides out of them, strip all the paint off them, and mod them so that they look like more realistic. And I didn't know that this was even a thing. So the top one is like you buy that car like that, and then the bottom one is what he's done to it. Gotcha. They've done to it gotcha. Right? So I became fascinated. Like literally the tiniest little cars, they strip them. The transfers that they did a rally car where they put full transfers mm. on the entire thing. This, And we think we yeah, yeah, yeah. Them, what it's this. And I was like, oh, that's quite niche. And then the this individual's uh, um, Instagram page is 145,000 followers. <laughs> and I just looked, I was like, I, you know, it's one of those things where I like, didn't even know that that was a thing. And it doesn't particularly interest me in that, like, cars don't particularly interest me that much. But I just picked it because I thought it was, yeah, it's one of those things where I didn't even know it was a thing. And I found it really interesting how uh, obsessed people are with it. And I just thought it was a cool little... Yeah, this is happening in the world of hobby as well as the things that we're doing. Uh, just Where are we? cool. Where's the old? Where's the old camera? There you, yeah, there we go. I did it. Many, That's many your moves. van, isn't it? That is my van. So many, 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 many. I can't get it in focus. Many, many years ago, it was in focus for a bit. But there we go. We uh, we went to a, a festival, and me and my best mate made a game up for everyone to play. It's kind of like a Mad Max type type game, mm. and um, I got. This is before I'd sort of come out of the hobby closet, as it were, to my mates. And uh, <laughs> I, uh, leading up to it, I, I found Matchbox and Hot Wheels versions of everybody's cars. Mm. And then I stripped them and repainted them to look like everybody's cars. And then I kind of, you know, um, that's apoc- great. Apocalypsed them up. Um, nice. And that was sort of, and they were like, oh, this is really that's cool. a great effort. This. Like, yeah, you know, I, I, I paint a bit of things occasionally now and again. <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing um nice that, that was it so yeah it's really good fun but modding it like as in slamming it and adding things that's pretty yeah. impressive it's yeah. insane yeah. The, the rally car was the one that blew my mind they took like a subaru impreza yeah. and turned it into like the full like this... 2005 rally impreza <sighs> so much board, crossover so. skills as well though isn't there oh yeah you know like i bet you'd be better at transfers after you do yeah. a few of them yeah you know, like they've been put it in like bio strip and stuff to get it yeah. off and i was just say it's so close to what we do yet so mm. wild, wild worlds apart and I didn't, I didn't even know it was the thing there's a show on at the minute on pardon me on channel 4 it has been recently anyway mate of mine put me on to it. it's like a doll's house yeah you know like these bake off type things and there's a lad yeah. on there who's 100% a whammer painter um, and he's like doing all these <laughs> like regency bits of furniture and stuff and then yeah. it flashes back to like his workshop and it's just full of like grungy D and and things like that. Good lad. Like, Those a lot dolls of... houses are crazy though. Like the size Bloody, of them, right? It's ridiculous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, Gaslands, Scott. So this was this was about a year before Gaslands came out, Scott. So I was ahead of the curve with that, but we never um You never invented it then. It. I know, right? I should have. Um, From the ground. Yeah, Gaslands up. is wicked. So the people who haven't heard about it, it's uh yeah, you, you take matchbox cars and then you glue like you mad max them up basically. Um 3D That's printing cool. has been great for games like Gaslands. Mm. Um so uh 
So yeah, yeah that right. was my bit because I just thought it was fun. Great pick, mate. Basically. Bit different. Yeah, Not very cool. Green. And it's your Space Marine colors on the top. It one, really so. is. The right color, at least. <laughs> but it's interesting you said, so that's that's when, when I did these cars, just like that top line green one, I did my mate's Focus, and his was that light blue mm. color. And I did it by doing exactly what you did with your Marine, silver, and then a flat color over it. Yeah. But it, And at the time, I thought, oh, you could only put clears over silvers and stuff, right? But actually, yeah. no, when you put a flat color over the the light, it does give you a different look, mm. doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it does, yeah. Um, so that was, yeah. Always learning. It's, it's kind of mad how, like, um, big Hot Wheels is when you actually look into it. It's crazy. <laughs> like, it's actually like, crazy. It's Hot Wheels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know what the craziest like, thing that I saw is, sorry to cut you, but I just, just remember, reminded me, when they take them out of the packet, they, like, heat the cardboard on the back so that they can remove the plastic where the car sits and keep the plastic of the cardboard in like perfect condition so they can rebox it like, yeah yeah nice nice that sounds like your kind of thing that matt that's that's kind well, of your level of like Dexter. there's a youtube but, channel yeah. i can't remember the name now um it's basically he gets the old matchbox cars <laughs> hot wheels cars the ones that he finds like in the trash or in ebay or whatever but he restores them to the box standard Beautiful. And they're like 40 minute videos, you just leave it running on auto. Beautiful, play right? Great. I'm adding that, mate. My entire YouTube's restoration videos. So, yeah. Uh, that yeah. and uh, pocket watches. Nice. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> you are basically Siler from Heroes, then. We're just yeah. all. Just so about the spectrum. charisma. <laughs> We're just all so on the spectrum. It's, it's just creativity, mate. It's wonderful. Um, they've wet the cardboard so they can customize it. Oh, there you go. It. There we that go. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Wetting the cardboard. Yeah. That's a new turn of phrase in my vocab. Here we go. Simone's saying it's crazy. It's crazy. It's, and then she's saying it's probably what the Hot Wheels people say about us oh, having so. war heavy painters. Yeah. So there we go. Yeah. Right. What's up next, Matt? Ooh, look at that. Yeah. Yeah. It's <clears throat> it's a sad place to be, but it's not often that I'm completely blown away by uh, a miniature these days, only because I look at too many of them. I'm sure many people understand. Um, but this one is just, just right. Mm. And uh, also our theme is small producers. Uh, and this is a small producer that uh, by Black Crow Miniatures. And I think they're a fantastic company. They don't really do any bad miniatures. Um but I really, really wanted to pick this for the box art by R now. And I just think he's got that warm ambience absolutely perfect. And I can't think Cozy. Yeah, I can't think of another piece like it that's done it mm. as good. Um and this I reckon if you put this on a cover of, I don't know, a storybook or something, people wouldn't even think it was a miniature, you know. Oh, I think um, it's like illustration type thing. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, but yeah, I just think it's absolutely wonderful, especially since it's kind of a subject matter that couldn't interest me less. It's like a dwarf or whatever. But um, yeah, it's just just got me. I just thought that is absolutely spot on. So mm. looks so. Cool. And Arnau is just always always putting out you know amazing stuff. But I hope he enjoyed this one. I hope he. Uh, yeah, got something out of it, you know. Well, it's funny, you were what saying you one, one of the reasons you, you hadn't been enjoying painting certain things recently was that there was a lot of one element of the model to paint, yeah? Mm. Um, whereas this is quite fun, right? There's kind of lots of everything. Um, yeah. Keep it, keep it interesting. Mm. It's just wonderful. It's just right. It's not over the top either. It's just that nice, yeah. One of my favorite things, actually, well, with Kirill's dwarf that we showed last time, <laughs> and this, that's probably my two favorite pieces of the year, to be honest. Just seeing them in the same week. Hold on, save it. That save, save, it up. save it up. So what you're saying is, yeah, I'm just two saying. favorite pieces of dwarfs. <laughs> God, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> so just... I think his pick last year was the dwarf, wasn't it? It was Albert's was it? dwarf, wasn't it? it? Was last year's pick. You secretly look love good, dwarf. good, good painters <laughs> like dwarfs. All right, if I commission them, I'm not getting them to do a dwarf. <laughs> oh, nice, nice, Scott. Scott, you've got your helpy, haven't you? I sent you a helpy like four months ago or three months ago. Is this the chat saying they haven't got a miniature? Um, unless it's a different Scott, of course. 
never know. Um, but yeah, but, but wrapping up, um, I didn't I didn't include Black Crow because we were only choosing two small producers. Um, but check them out. This is their latest release. Uh, I think it's just come out or it's just about to be out. Um, but yeah, it was more my pick for Arnau's unbelievable paint job. Kind of looks like what well, I'm going to look like when I'm older. You hope. Mm, I hope. <laughs> it's nice, mate. It's a lovely pick. Uh, we'll put, as usual, we'll put links down to everything that we chat about uh, down in the description. Uh, the feet are getting a lot of uh, attention. Yeah, yeah. So before well, of we they turn are. into a different uh, podcast, let's move on to the next slide. That's Rich's Rich's nighttime no pick podcast. From me today. No pick from Matt. Oh, mate. No, I I yeah. cut my internet usage down a hell of a lot this week. Basically, do I didn't go on it. It's yep, not allowed at work. Yeah. Good lad. You were on, and, were you uh, on TikTok? Oh, oh mate, don't. dude, have you not heard about Matt on TikTok? Have you not? Heard what? what? Right, settle in. Here we go. How many hours what was your, what was, did you spend what? per day on TikTok? Yeah. No, per per week. Per week. I give hours. you. Yeah. Well, the screen time was saying like 35, 38 hours. A week. <laughs> a week. <laughs> Wait, about on Matt, TikTok. About it. It's just death scrolling. You just go down rabbit holes. Mate, I'm bad. really bad at it. That's that's five and a half, nearly five and a half hours a day. Dude, that is a whole week's work. I know. Yeah. Some people I mean, don't even work 38 hours a week. I'm not going to lie. I'm struggling. Not with TikTok, but I'm struggling at the moment with the death scroll. The death scroll is real. Just don't do it. They, weren't, they were good TikToks, though. Yeah, you know? that, it was like yeah. watch restoration, Never that. brickwork, <laughs> electricity, installations, all that stuff. <laughs> well, well done, mate. Get on. No dancing good, memes. Good, good for you, bud. Good for you. Like, yeah. Stick to, stick to actual <laughs> interactive stuff. Right and and communicating with people and reading books, you'll be fine. I think um, I think paint, paint, painting paint. this hobby helps me. Yeah. That's that's yeah, what same. does exactly. it for me. I've been yeah. itching to download a new video game for the last few oh, weeks. Hey, I've had too much no. to paint. Like it's like I cannot. Me and do Rich it. have been talking about um, it because like a lot of our friends are like, "Oh, Grand Theft Auto is coming out," and me and Rich are like, "Nope, can't. not doing it." No. Can't do it. Screws us over. We'll have a we'll have a holding yeah. screen for the week Space Marine Two comes out. That'll be. That'll be on the videos for that. But other than that, I'm not doing it. Hey, I'm not, not going to get it. I'm not going to uh, buy no. Space Marine Two. Right. More hobby. I am. Dawn I'm of War. Make the shit out That's of it. Um, imagine imagine yeah, how much too. Excel stuff you could do in 35 hours a week. There we go. Um, right. Main subject: small producers. Yeah. So really enjoyed doing it last year. So we've tried to pick a few more this year. Some of these will be new producers. Some of these are ones that we've known for a few years, haven't mentioned them before, um, all the rest of it. We've tried to go for a bit of a mix. So you've got some UK ones. Obviously, that's where us guys are based. Uh, we've got a couple of European ones, and I think we've got a North American one um, as well. Uh, so I think let's just get stuck in. Um, Ain't nothing some, to some, it. Some, but some cool do it. Th- yeah, exactly. Some cool things. Um, and, I'm, you know, I'll say it now. You know, we you know, we are a small producer, Cult of Paint. You know, we make miniatures. We do content and all the rest of it. And, yeah supporting small producers work makes a massive difference you know you're generally affecting you know one or two people's lives quite significantly with your support um so if you do sort of like what people are doing do do consider it because it um yeah do consider support it does make a mm. make a difference and if they're shit then don't so yeah you know it's a <laughs> good good way of getting feedback um right what's first up first up <laughs> oh, oh mighty brush luther so we've known luther for gosh years and years now um i sort of knew he did this transfer thing but it was only about 18 months two years ago i I really sort of got addicted to it um and i've spent a hideous amount of money now um at the white brush Uh, incidentally we're not affiliated with anyone that we mentioned on this we haven't been asked to promote these people Uh, we haven't even told them that we're talking about them um so there's none of that but yeah um just mega high quality transfers uh, tons of cool designs often has designs that perhaps aren't up for very long uh due to li- <laughs> licensing issues um where you know certain companies might not have pulled their finger out of their ass to produce decals for something um so luther gets it done um but uh yeah they're great there's there's a there's a few sort of decals companies around the world and i've bought from most of them american ones japanese ones and yeah and these are by far and away have been the best ones i've i've worked with this last week i think i dropped about 60 quid on some black templar sort of generic Cru- crusadey templary ones and some generic like chaos stars because it's can never have enough right 
<laughs> no, they are cool. Um, so, uh, so yeah, and Luther also does some really great uh, painting tutorial PDFs and stuff like that as well. Um, he's a cracking hobbyist. If you're a fan of the GW hobby, which I imagine a lot of you are that are watching, you might have seen his Raptors before. Um, he's got a great Space Marine mm. uh, Raptors army. Um, uh, there was a rumor that G Double told told him off on the transfers. Yeah, I don't think it's a rumor, Christian. I think there's. I think I think there was a. <laughs> there was a one Strongly day when there was an awful lot of Badab transfers on there, and the next day there were no longer a load of Badab transfers on there, mainly because they're in a cupboard behind me. Um, but uh, you put them out of stock. I think as soon, as soon as I heard that rumor, I was on there in a fucking flash. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. But uh, but yeah, great producer. I think uh, Andy. I think he did some towers, didn't he? For you, uh, some cool orangey towers for you recently. So, cool. yeah, tower cool. Some Very cool. transfers are great. Yeah. Some good stuff. But there's also find. yeah, there's also just a ton of generic ones like the slides Matt's used here. Um, mm. You know, hazard stripes, numbers. Yeah, really there's good. loads of like, great stripes graffiti. Are key. Um, mm. I can't remember if I think pretty sure it's Luther who's done those screen ones recently. Um, so they're tiny ones that you put over like the screen on a on a console. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on a miniature and stuff. Really great. Idea. So you do your classic sort of green, you know, green blend, and then you pop pop right. a little thing over there. It's just really cool. Really good um, transfers of transfers of bases and terrain and stuff because the size goes up really well. Uh, like if, yeah, yeah. If the creep on the size for like uh, numbers and stuff is really good. Yeah, Jordan. Yeah, I do. I do. If you need bad ab stuff. Hit me up. It's, uh, we're bringing it back next year. Bad up 2024. Is uh, um, Joey the Firehawk? Cool. Do they ever do Firehawks uh, transfers? Was that like a Phoenixy symbol? Is that the Firehawks? Yeah, yeah they were orange. I don't recall having them. I'll have a look through afterwards, though. Right? Yeah, have a look. I've got an idea. Uh, I'm currently looking now. There are some uh, similar looking ones. Yes, they'll all be similar. <laughs> Yeah, look conveniently. Just where are my red scorpions, boys? Where the... are my red scorpions? Oh, I've got a, mm. got a couple of sheets of that, mate. Yeah, good, good, good. Um, yeah. It's incredibly hard to find, like good high quality transfers. Yeah. They are so difficult to like, just even produce. Like they're, yeah. they're just not very easy. Well, no, GW not. can't do it, so. But that's it, right? People are like, oh, just do them on your printer. Would buy this paper. I've tried it. It's awful. Never looks good it's enough. It's terrible. Um, and and, the, Just and depends how fussy the, you are. The printers as well that that you you need to do the like metallic ones and the white ones and things like that. Like they're yeah, very expensive. Serious bits of kit, aren't they? Mm. Mm. So yeah, that was one of mine. Great service as well. So you know, mm. order, usually get your order within a couple of days. So nice. Great if you're behind on filming a YouTube video and you haven't got the transfers you thought you had. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what's up next? Oh, ho, 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 ho. Now, I say we're not affiliated. We have done a few box arts for this company, but we aren't affiliated to them other than that. Um, this is uh, Andrew Lay, uh, Tiny Mushroom Wizard. Uh, it's a range of teeny tiny. So these things are about that big or so. Um, exactly what it sounds like, basically. They're, they're little woodland wizards so on the left you've got a uh, uh, wizard there on the right you've got a mushroom wizard that has turned himself into a toad <laughs> um, and they're just they're just lovely you know it's it's a uh, another example of of particularly you know the the advent of technology and the, the prevalence of it now andrew i believe is a graphic designer i think um by trade or an illustrator i think he's a graphic designer um and yeah has been able to put those skill sets into learning you know 3d sculpting you get them as prints they're not casts you get them as prints um the presentation of them is is beautiful um and yeah they're just you know if you like this kind of fairy tale type stuff and i know a lot of people like cutesy miniatures um then this one's a a cracking cracking job and our ben uh did the two box arts that you're looking at now on screen did a banging job as well he did a cracking job didn't he yeah really do i think there's probably it's four or five now out that is brought out this year um so yeah i love them i've got several i've bought several of them um to put in my box of things i'll never get around to painting 
Hmm. Nice logo, though, isn't it? But but one at home. Yeah, but it's the simplest that. Su- yeah, but you also you support someone. Precisely. Right? Sometimes right. I like to. Precisely. In fact, the sec the same with my pick is I've bought. I'm buying all the miniatures they do, and I and I know I'm not going to pay them, but I like the company and I want to put money in it because I just it. think it's cool. Yeah. Um, but it's know, also something. It's been... Remember when we had Mark on, Mark Gibbons on years ago? Now he spoke about mm. how he bought miniatures sometimes just to have as sculptures on the shelf. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, did I say they're 3D prints? Yes, you 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 get them as prints, not casts. Um, but they're all cleaned up nice and everything there. You know, they're, they're lovely. Yeah, the beetle guard is really wicked, isn't it? Mm. Two mushrooms, a toad, and a beetle walk into a bar. Um, I think I've seen a beetle guard. Is there one in the MPO? I, uh, yeah, there is. In fact, I think one. I think that's the box art one by Thor Interagnor. Uh, uh, that guy. Well, um, well, I've already given sure. it something. Yeah, I'm pretty sure yeah. I saw that. Uh, MPO will talk about it at the end of the show, guys. I know we had a bunch of questions about it, so we will cover that um, towards the end. But yeah, like this is just th- this is that classic one man band, like just just executed to super high standards. You know, everything is right, nothing's rushed, and it's it's all just yeah, it's just executed perfectly. So you end up with these beautiful things, um, and I think it's a testament as well the amount that I keep seeing popping up that are painted. I mean, it also helps that they're teeny tiny. So, yeah, mega, mega, mega. Small so is good. Those are my two picks, both uh, UK-based uh, companies. Nice. So I have to kind of say that now, partly because obviously it's you know nice to have British companies and all the rest of it, but with shipping and things now, that can affect um, people. So it's good to know uh, what's what. Right, what's up next? Ah, it's me. Ooh, Mr. Wilder. So... Uh, the two that I picked, I picked one creative, like content creator, who also does have some uh, products as well, uh, and then one small, other small company. But I picked this because I'm hoping, or well, a lot of people will probably know who Adam Wilder is. But I specifically picked his YouTube channel because he's only got just over eleven thousand. Uh, That's what I was just looking at. He's 11, 11, yeah, not, he has. He yeah. hasn't done a video in about five, six years, mind. True, um, oh. but, but but there is tons of videos on there, aren't there? There That's is, it. and that yeah. the whole thing. So the the KV one project, which is in the picture at the top, and it's the the video kind of thing that he's got. It for me, it's the best. It's brilliant. Uh, step by step historical uh, uh, painting tutorial that he had that there is on YouTube. It's so well explained and so thorough that I never really done any real sort of historical painting before. And the first time I tried it following that video step by step, I produced something that was one of my favorite things that I've ever created. Um, I say, so hang on, here's an interesting. So Brian's saying in the chat, Adam Wilder, quotation marks, squaw, small question mark. So yes, all right, yeah. you could argue that, that he is well known in that sense. Um, but for us, he's still a one man band. You know, yes, he yeah. you know he he writes books. He, um, you know, he's a, he writes articles for magazines. He's had some some ranges of paints and things with people. But we want to expose people to him because he's is a fucking legend. Like this this yeah. guy changed historicals painting, right, Rich? Like yeah, absolutely. Um, he, he, I, yeah, for, for me as well, he, he he bridges the gap very much between what we do in the historical world as well. Like okay, in the historical world, lots of people are going to know who he is. But within our kind of little corner of the the the, the hobby world, I think um, he is a bit of an unknown. And the amount of people that message me asking me, "Oh, how do I look at historical things? Who should I look at for historical tips? How did you do that weathering? How did you do that?" Um, and every single time, it's I just tell them about this, and nearly every single one of them then goes, "Oh, I've never heard of that person before." Mm. So. I this is the first I've heard of him as well. Like I've, there you go, right. I've never heard of him before. <laughs> so he he was one of the. I think there's a. It's not so much an argument, but there's himself and Mig Mig Jimenez, the guy that uh, am I Mig guy. Um, they both had a lot to do with the whole modulation thing mm. of how they how to paint armor. Like up until they were doing it, it had always just been a flat color. Um, and then they came along and started doing this modulation, and, and just everyone was like, "What?" Yeah, like, everyone lost their fucking mind. Basically, right. every yeah. all the old boys went, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" Yeah, steady on. That looks steady a on there, lad. Um, yeah, um, yeah. 
um, and yeah. this, this YouTube channel is Brill. Um, and his whole the way that he paints is is incredible. And if anyone anyone wants to learn how to weather anything at all, just go and look at either this or his Instagram because it is yeah. insane. How or to say he's got a few books, hasn't he? He's got a few books out. Yeah. I do wonder if he's more known, not just obviously in military modeling circles, but also potentially in America. Yeah. Um, than he, than he is over here. Um, so great pick mate really wouldn't have yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't, yeah, wouldn't that have was one of them that. and then the other one for me was uh Durgan paintball so oh. i picked these because i first it was the first and i think one of the only kickstarters i've ever actually backed and i backed it i'm you're going back years it was the first thing that they ever did was their dwarf range their dwarf, dwarf explorer range uh, and that's how I kind of fell in love with them. I love the aesthetic. I love how super, super high fantasy that it, it is. Um, it gives proper like Zelda vibes to to me. And dwarves are one of my favorite races in the fantasy kind of world. And I've always wanted to do something with them. And I bought the whole set when it first got released. And it was one of the first things that they ever did. And it's still, it's, I still have them. They're beautiful, beautiful sculpts. Um, and they just sat there in a box waiting for the day when Andy and Ben go, let's do some fantasy skirmish based stuff. Um, <laughs> and then I can, which will never happen. And Andy's already shaking Keep his head. dreaming. Yeah, exactly. Rick. Um, what, what, what fantasy skirmish stuff is there? I don't know. Just but something. For real. There could be something. Hmm? I don't know. We'll make one up. But anyway, don't piss on my chips. Anyway, um, that's, that's, <laughs> that's why I, um, I, I pick them because I've, I've always loved them and I've got them. And even if one day I just end up painting them for the sake of painting them, like we said earlier, you know, you support. I supported them because they were they were producing something that really spoke to me and how I sort of see dwarves and that kind of fantasy setting. They, it was literally like someone just pulled it out of my head and just gone. There you go. That's exactly what it should look like. So nice. They kind of know me, it. aren't they? It's kind of kind of yeah. more that that gnome. Big angle. noses, yeah, like yeah, they like, look a bit like um, uh, the the Kirkby illustrations for the Discworld yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, book yeah. series. A bit, they, they're not taken from there, but they look similar to that. And it's that real high fantasy based uh, dwarf uh, aesthetic, which I love. Yeah. Um, also, that the painting is there, is, there a, is there a game, or has he just created like a setting and miniatures for it? No, it would be a setting. great. It would be a fantastic little little game wouldn't it I'm looking, yeah. I'm looking through the website now um, especially when you see the success of stuff like moonstone um you know mm. that there's definitely an appetite for that sort of yeah four or five and minute just skirmish thing the thing that i loved about it is when you bought the set that i bought you got like the miniatures in in sit like beautiful packaging like magnetic sealed packaging oh, lovely yeah. uh, and you also got a book which was a story about the dwarfs from their like their <laughs> nice. home and it was like this whole bit of fluff about it and it was just <laughs> It was a bit of me. So you got a setting, you got names, you got a story, and you got these incredible miniatures that were just bang on. Lovely. And this store's based in Europe, I think. Uh, I think so. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. I think it's European. I'm not 100 percent sure though. To be honest. <coughs> um, on so I'm yeah. pretty sure they are. Prices are in euros. So. Yeah. And the also chapter the lead is, well, is Italian. Oh, cool. It's at yeah. the bottom. So it's definitely Italy. There we go. Mm. Yeah, I think it is. But yeah. Oh, yeah, they're just the best. I love them. They're great. And also the critters that they do as well, like that beetle that's on there. Uh, they do some elves on like velociraptors and stuff, and they're just crazy. <laughs> but they're amazing. Yeah, nice. Yeah, Brian say so, yeah, cute. Mike Ronaldi, one of the best books I've ever bought. That mm. um, he's my favourite. And Mig, obviously, yeah, Mig Mig Um so yeah, ton of ton of great picks. There. Great picks, mate. Cheers. Really like yeah, it. Those, those are mine. Those are mine. So on to Andy's next, and I guess do you want to talk a little bit more about Black Crow, the one you mentioned earlier, the R now one, because um, they've been around a while, uh, right? Do you have a slide about Black Crow, Matt, or not? <laughs> we got the R now, go haven't we? Yeah. Yeah, I think Black Crow just. I think in the beginning they just did a one or two miniatures real slow, but they always kind of sold out. Um, 
it was the I can't remember what he's called, but it's like a goblin-y guy or like this, really good. I think Lucas Peter sculpted it and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, they've always done nice miniatures, but they've kind of gradually ramped it up to do more regular releases, and it's a one-man band. Um, yeah, they never produce a bad model, really. They did the um, the kind of lady with the shield and the owl on that one at Monty last year that we all mm -hmm. love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did. They did that. Um, they did the triple set of dwarf busts that Raoul sculpted mm -hmm. recently. That was a really nice set. I was tempted by that. Uh, did you see those, Henry? It was like three no. dwarf busts as a set. Been around a while, haven't they? Like, I'm sure these yeah, they guys were, were, were there when I was sort of first uh, opening my eyes to larger scale stuff. Oh, yeah, here we go. 2014. Um, mm. So, yeah, got some good, some good. Uh, some good history there and i've worked with some brilliant painters and sculptors looking at this on the website that's it um, they always work this one's by joaquin actually um i see that matt's got the sculptor on there which yeah is actually quite a few of these minis have featured in our sort of picks of the week over the last few years um, yeah they just will some of the paint jobs or the all the, all the minis the actual box art itself um it's got that incredible uh girl with the hunting hawk that Mark did. Oh uh, yeah. A while back. And the girl with the umbrella that is amazing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So again, a European based company, this one. But they're 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 at pretty much all the shows, aren't they? Black mm. they've, they've always got a stand, don't they? No, I've never seen a stand. No? Well maybe I've seen other people selling their miniatures then. Um Yeah, maybe. Definitely, yeah. I think you can get them yeah. from um I think you can get them from El Greco miniatures in the right. UK okay. and then direct from direct from Black Crow for Europe. So, but yeah, they're fantastic. That'll Check them out then. for sure. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okie dokie. Um, so what were your actual two? My main two. Ah, yes. So hmm. I think, uh, where do I start? Well, tomorrow he's got a new one. <laughs> so, so Mark has two miniatures. Um, he's just produced these two, and I think both of them have had a massive impact uh, on the display painting scene, whatever you want to call it. But I think both of these miniatures really have actually uh, genuinely had some kind of impact. If you've been to a show and you've seen how many of these dudes with the axe, there's a lot. Uh, you know, considering how many busts there are and bigger producers actually you really notice how many people have painted this and obviously he's doing it on his workshops and people are finishing it after uh but he does have his third one and it's out tomorrow and i begged him for us to show the pics but he said no because he's not finished it <laughs> <laughs> so uh he's probably doing the photos tonight and then it's ready for tomorrow's release or whatever um but i've seen it and it's fantastic and he's done some pretty special things in the painting, I think. So, yeah, I, I no doubt it'll be a pick of the week on the next episode. <laughs> but I really I really think this is a special one because, um, you know, Mark's one of the best painters out there. And it's really cool that he's doing his own range. And the, the thing that's special about it is you obviously get the full video tutorials in depth. So you get to follow along and follow these amazing box arts. But I think they're also very different, you know, what they offer. Um, he's He entered them in a historical section uh, into, into shows like Monty, and he's won awards for both of these figures, Platinum for The Joy, which is the girl, uh, just recently. And, yeah, I just think they really offer something different in terms of uh, the type of mini they are, right? Just mm -hmm. kind of fun, but actually, you you look at what he's done, and it shows what's kind of possible on something as simple as this. But it's great uh, to see his thing. success as well, though, isn't it? You know, we we've been on no mark for yeah. a long time. You know, we we did some took him over to Wales with us years ago now, five six years ago. Do mm. some classes and stuff, and to see him, you know, now go from being an excellent painter to now having his art school, producing his miniatures, producing his contest stuff. You know, it's it's again, it's mm. great to see that he's there's been enough support out there and he's produced good good enough quality to to warrant that support um and now we get cool things like this right i love the fact as yeah. well that they're they're non-violent just mm. exactly snippets of like life they're not mm. how often are a lot of the things that we see from the big name stuff a lot of it is 
war based and I think it's you know that's part and parcel of the hobby but it's nice to see that there is other elements of that but other elements of that that are being focused on by really kind of really great painters and creators as well because it's nice to have that just break think, yeah. a little bit I think the painting is just outstanding though you know the t the t-shirt on the girl is incredible <coughs> we've got yeah. you know really nice really nice folds light cast shadow the really cool free hand and it's just like you know like a hawaii beach kind of t-shirt you know and it's amazing uh, and enough. yeah his his fabric is just bonkers right the denim mm. is super convincing the woolly jumper the leather um but i love that you can get these miniatures and there's like the the video tutorials to follow them and that's why i think it's really cool and these are the ones that i'll buy every single one just to kind of have and keep and there's no way I'll, I'll ever paint them um and that's not a not a negative to the sculpts i just know i won't get around to doing them um mm. but yeah i just want to get them to to have and like kind of collect you know and support uh this so yeah uh check out his new one out tomorrow nice one. that's about it i think I've talked about nice. both these pieces before yeah. yeah the new one new one will be cool very different to these two sweet so last pick is <laughs> one of the right. greatest on the right there right 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 let's let's just so dragon head models uh is run by jamie and r now and i had to show this to just you know just to support R now because he's got a lot of stress to go through working with Jamie and I feel <laughs> you know bad that he's got to tolerate that because Jamie's I hope he's watching this because you are an absolute reprobate uh, <laughs> I have to say the um the griffin sculpted by Patrick Mason which is uh, obviously the one on the right the griffin is incredible and it is definitely one of my favorite sculpts um ever I absolutely love it um that was that was jamie's half so dragon head uh was jamie originally but he's kind of teamed up with arnau because arnau did some miniatures and they just do them together now um but then the the dragon with the girl and the uh the sushi or whatever she's eating um japanese food that's arnau's kind of creation and his taste and very very much like mark this is a painter who's probably bored of painting war type figures <laughs> and has gone yeah i want you know this isn't real life like mark stuff but it's a cute little dragon with a kind of elfy girl uh just eating some food so it's fantasy unlike mark's but it's still not a war thing you know it's fun and, and cute um and the painting is just bonkers again so um it's just really nice to see that i think but i think he's going to be doing a whole bunch of new figures coming soon which is another reason i wanted to shout out because i think they've got plans to do to kind of ramp up and, and do a lot of releases nice one very cool um yeah that yeah they've got a kind of a griffin model is yeah it's mega special isn't it i think they've got kind mm. of a mix portfolio like their old figures yeah it is. aren't especially yeah. coherent but then i think what they're planning on doing going forward is having a coherent range uh, more of an identity but um i think now they've teamed up that uh yeah maybe be a bit more organized than jamie is on his own <laughs> poor jamie getting so much abuse from you he deserves it <laughs> <laughs> <Fair>. <laughs> Actually, him and him and other Jamie meeting for the first time was one of the funniest oh, moments Jesus in my life. Christ. They're like, oh, you're was... bold. Yeah. And you're called Jamie as well. Yeah. No we way, man. Be, we, we can be friends. And then they were yeah. made, both making the terrible old man jokes. Yeah, dad jokes. Like, it was both like, pissing themselves. He was like, <laughs> it was like British dumb and dumber. But like, but like middle class dumb and dumber. <laughs> Something like that. Right. People, uh, people enjoying in the chat. Apparently, the Griffin's got a right pair of plums on him. Is this right? Mm. Yes, yeah, the French um, Carrasco, Patrick. Yeah, Carrasco, Carrasco style anatomy. Oh, oh when when that rhino turned up, that was uh, I did not expect that. <laughs> <laughs> you love a, you love a rhino schlong, man. What are you on about? I, mean, <laughs> I thought it was like a sprue bold or something. <laughs> Oh, I'd oh, forgotten I about. see that Tuesday. griffin from Alan here, Crasco's actually, and it haunts 
Um, nah, it's a great, oh, it's a great, great model. Um, so yeah, so hopefully that has. Uh, Do you have one more? Quick... Oh, what? Who's? Yeah. When? I thought you said you hadn't done it. Oh, yet. me. Little small content creator. Oh, oh yes, nice. me. Yes, uh, sorry, I showed I, you this at the weekend. I didn't, didn't realise this was a. Uh, we this was in this section, but yeah, great. Yes, you did. Yeah. This is Big my fan. favorite YouTube channel, other than <laughs> yeah. Cult of Paint, obviously. Um, it's um, brilliant. It's, it's Peep Show Does Warhammer. I've not even watched it before. What is it? I've shared it, but you pro obviously didn't watch it. Uh, okay. Well, go on. Uh, you take it. It's, <laughs> it's well, well worth. Well, it's, it's hobby entertainment, isn't it? Okay. Um, it's my favorite YouTube channel because he's talking about what we all really love, which is old Warhammer. Um, but the narration is absolutely brilliant. I just I love listening to it. It's hilarious. The humor is spot on for me. And uh, this isn't supposed to be an insult uh, to you, David, but it feels like I'm watching Peep Show about Warhammer. And those are my two favorite things. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, the uh, the little the little dry humor lines in it, I think, are spot on, and it's easily my favorite Warhammer YouTube um no selfies or any other rubbish just proper content so yeah enjoy oh, it, it uh, now they also I'm definitely want to do old and demon the... right yeah so this yeah. this is circling back around to that orc at the start so i've got a buddy of mine sending me some some old orcs to do for old and demon 2024 mm. yeah 100 i want to yeah. do it i really want to yeah sure yeah determine what is old and demon because to me old and demon is probably just like 20 minutes i mean ago. anything coming out for the new uh, old world release will probably qualify okay. <laughs> yeah, so generally the rules are it it has to be on the goblin green base oh does it uh it's like is it yeah it's one of the rules goblin green rimmed base oh. <laughs> Delicious. Right. i think he was uh, in the hobby then i'm not putting it on a gaming base a sacrilege. Oh, look at them. See, already breaking breaking the rules. Just rebels. Gaming base. Two, I don't you? want a gaming base. Um but we'll do rules. we'll do more of a chat on it because I think it's I think it warrants uh, more than I use half a packet of milliput on a game base. Um <laughs> you could just have a really tall one. Yeah. Like, well, like you see them them oh, was about to be really rude then. You see those people down the beach who built them little tome stone. Oh yeah, yeah. Towers just do that. <coughs> do that. Oh, what, what did Albert didn't Albert do that on a on a goblin grot shaman or something, didn't he? For a, a GD. I don't think. I don't know. There was mm. the good question. Is this the same person that did the, the old box dread for GD last year? No, no. that's um, one of those ultras, ultras. I don't know, but I d I've really the, the account I recognize like we definitely that's featured the account several, goblin green several times yeah, with features. This yeah. is old and demon. The yeah. account, that counts Goblin Green, which is a different account. But he entered this competition. <coughs> nice. nice. Anyway. So there we go. A few producers, a few content creators um, that hopefully you might not be aware of, um, but things that we uh, we really, really enjoy. Um, so yeah, a little bit of a shorter episode this week, guys. Um, so we'll move on to uh, Paint Cultists. But just before we do, I just want to answer a couple of questions about the MPO online, which we closed submissions for a few days ago, whatever it was now, um, uh, including those people that asked for a little bit of an extension because there was an issue with the clock. So hopefully that's all done. Uh, if you guys have reached out about things you haven't filled in correctly and wanted us to change, we're pretty sure we've done uh, all the changes now. Um, but if for any reason there isn't something, then obviously do get in touch with us. Um, but Seeing as there are a few thousand entries, it's taking us a little while um, to go through. But our intentions is to have the award show next week. Um, it won't be live streamed um, just because uh, we want to make sure we get things, sort of everything right with it. And we want to make sure it doesn't run on and be super, super long. Um, but suffice to say, for now, anyway, um, you're all awesome. The amount of you that entered and have enjoyed it is amazing. We're really, really happy with it. Um, We'll do the award show. We'll also announce at the award show the dates and the details for our in-person MPO uh, next year uh, as well. And something I'll do a lot of in the next show, but I might as well touch on just now, is big thanks to Matt for the sheer amount of 
computery nonsense that he's done to uh, to get that thing working. Um, but yeah, going to so be I better hope, next year. I hope you, well, yeah, but it was hey, look, everywhere. Look, it was better than the last time we did it, right? Last it's time true. the Website internet blew up. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, we're all good. But the judges yeah, are a beautiful are gallery already, right? We've got the galleries amazing. We'll keep a winner's gallery up just as, you know, you can go on and look at the 21 winner, 20, 2021 winner's galleries already up there. We've drafted in a few more judges to help us as well just because of the sheer amount. Um, so, uh, yeah, we'll go through all that uh, next week with you guys. But paint cultists, we've gone to. So this used to be something that mainly did for Instagram, but since Instagram shit the bed and doesn't particularly want to support or promote uh, creators, uh, we've moved it largely onto our Discord, but it is still on there. You've got 30,000 odd uh, tags on there for hashtag paint cultists on Instagram. Uh, we've also got an Instagram, uh, we've also got a paint cultist channel over on the Discord as well. Uh, and all I'll do is grab a couple that I see each time, sling them up uh, and have a natter. And there's tons of them and they're amazing. Um, and it's been really lovely to see people people go, you know, take up the hashtag and use it. So hopefully what it will do is expose you to different styles of painting, different types of miniatures, producers, things like that that you might not come across normally with your your algorithms and all that. Um, and that is the gallery only on social media. Uh, no, Alex, if you go on the miniaturepaintingopen.co.uk <laughs> on the website, it's all on there. Um, right. What's up first, Matt? Bit of crommage. Oh, this was for you, Rich. I thought a bit of Macron's. Rich needs Doesn't a like Necrons this week. He needs a lift. How good is this? I was chatting to Andy in the car at the weekend when we were driving to class. I was like, I don't quite understand why I haven't done Necrons. Um, which do. is possibly when you then turned around and said to me, it's because you don't like 40K. Um, but, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, dude. <laughs> which has hurt. been Stunning. playing on my mind for a few days now. It's a bit of you a broke him. It was, well, it was, yeah. Well, maybe we'll talk about that. We'll have a, a therapy session. Uh, over <laughs> why doesn't Henry like 40K? Oh. <laughs> and why has Rich quit the hobby? And why is yeah. Matt not getting anything painted and going on TikTok for 40 hours? And uh, why do I suck? Um, but how good is this? Like, it's very good. It's just lovely. I love that scheme. It's just lovely, lovely colors, lovely mm. tape, lovely model, lovely, lovely. Should be lovely. your uh, your old and demon entry, uh, old Necron. There you go. Oh, I remember oh, yeah. the white dwarf I got. I that love had a those free metal Necron miniature on it. Yeah. I think I'm pretty sure the front cover was the. The you looked at it in my house the other fourth day. Fourth or dude. fifth edition. At uh, what? That Necron. That white dwarf episode's on my coffee table. You looked at it. You're like, oh, that's, that's why one. it's on my mind then. Yeah, with the chaos yeah. cover. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. I yeah. thought it was on my shelf. That's why I was remembering it. But yeah, beautiful. The, the, old, <laughs> um, uh, the, the old Necron <laughs> metal models, the metal that they were made out of, would that, if you put that into like burnishing liquid, would it change? Uh, well, oh, white, you're thinking like the metal, tracks to rust it. it, yeah? Yeah, I just had this idea of imagine doing the entire um, mm, Necron right. army of the old metals where you didn't paint them at all, you just put it them into the burnishing liquid and it turned them yeah. all rusty and gross and then that was your army. I don't know. I mean, to be fair, it was a, a, a quite limited range um, Still of, cool. about, of about four minutes. Peak, though. Uh, Still oh, peak. Yeah. But, but very, very cool. Oh, and do you remember, I don't know if you boys will remember, they did a, they, they did a like an excavation site board for it as well and it had like an old digger kit like a tamia type digger kit it wouldn't have been tamia it would have been something from like playmobil or something digger kit um <laughs> and like oh yeah it was so good so 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 good uh, but this is not an old cron this is a new cron uh, and it's amazing uh i think have they have they brought those new necron models out yet i can't remember they showed us a bunch didn't they at one of the recent reveals um yeah they because at 10 a.m on one saturday everyone posted them so yeah Right, so you know yeah. that old chestnut. Yeah, and, uh, uh, saw a bunch. The, of the individual that painted this, Thomas, is in the chat. So, oh, well nice one. Good work, good man. Oh, and hit the and green it's pistachio. It's pistachio. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, PTSD. love this. Love this. So this one's from the uh, Discord. So what's up next, Matt? Next is nice Ooh. Frog. seeing Froggy more and more of of uh certain miniatures cropping up now i feel like there's a lot of slands i feel like people mm. have maybe painted their lizards saved the slan for last and are getting it done um there's actually speaking of that i'm seeing more and more of the free guild general on horse 
uh, Marshall on the mm. horse starting to pop yeah. up here and there as well. So I think we're in for a treat treat with that soon. But I just love this. I love this model like so much. Um, and I think this is a really cool paint job. Um, Very cool. Yeah, it's like, lovely. I love, I love the blue, how the, the frog stands out, doesn't he? Like, yeah. yeah. I like the two tone blue. It's like dark blue and light blue, right? It's, you know, it's a classy idea. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. But it's, um, yeah, I don't know. I just really like this paint job. It, it's, mm. yeah, it's, it's a nice, nice take. I, it, I think it shows the model off really well. Mm. That makes sense. It's very easy to look at, right? It's not too busy. It's not, you know, it's easy to read. It seems to be the, the trendy um, thing to say at the minute. Put the put the skink on the base as well instead of up higher, kind of like that. Oh, oh yeah, the lad on, is he's normally on the left, is he? As you look at it on the mm, on the plate. question mark. All right, <laughs> I just I never the noticed left or the right one of the those snake two. bird before either. Little, it's little an option, put... so you get a vine with snake bird and a uh, vine with that. Nice. Nice. I broke both, obviously. Obviously, yeah. No. <laughs> I think I said this within two days of it arriving, maybe, maybe less. Yeah. Um, Have it back if you want. The slam. No, I'd like to thank it. Um, it's because I thought it'd be cool to extend it really, really high. <laughs> um, so I began to go wrong. Frogs are better than people. Nah, yeah. <laughs> Correct. Uh, next. Oh, cool. oh this, so this is an account we featured many times. Um, they're prolific, to be honest. Um, and I just always, their work always jumps out. Um, so this is from Instagram. Um, and yeah, I just, I really like it when painters have a, you know, you know, that's a so and so's painted this model and so and so's painted that model. I think it's really cool. Um, no idea what this model is. Not a sausage. Um, is it them things from Star Trek that fights Captain Kirk? <sighs> And they're like, Rah. is it a croxigore mixed with Talbot? Yeah, it's a croxigore it... with Talbot. Is it a? Oh, that's what it is, is it? Yeah, it's one of the, as far as I can tell, I think it's one of the new croxigores with the towel, uh, the, the ribbed armor bit, and the leg piece, and then oh, that's right. some sort of nice. the gun, and it's a towel missile launcher on their back. Nice, I think. It's just what are cool. they called those things from Star Trek? It's just really the gone. Cool is well. it a gone? I guess someone will, know, someone will know in the chat. Come on, chat, help me out. Is it, is it called Spock? <laughs> um, Star Trek Gorn. Is that what they're called? <laughs> Jedi? Darth, Darth something or other, yeah. 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 Um, no. Right, a couple more, is there? Right. Yeah, it's a uh -huh. Gorn. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, cool. Oh, my God, those prosthetics. <laughs> they're they're great. What are you on about? Whoa, this is really cool. Um, oh yeah, how good is this? Very cool. Um, is like, it a robot on the back? It's a bit of a robot, isn't it? Like it, it, it's. I just. Uh, I think it's I a need robot to do something. Need to do something like this soon. Um, yeah, really, really do. Great account. Mm. Um, yeah, re really, really enjoyed it. But this, I feel like this is the type of thing where you'll come back from one of the shows and be like, oh. This thing was cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we'll spend ages talking about it. So the orange, the orange and white on the lorry is <laughs> Oh, how good is that? Peak. I got I got so that scheme like coming up in a few weeks on something. Can't wait. So I'm more slow. into the grass. I'm like, how have you done this grass, dude? Hit me up. Tell me teach me the how old, to do the grass. That's the old get the thingy out. What's it rich? You'll know. Proper this. static grass. Yeah, yeah, with with the like little agitator. Little, yeah, 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 yeah. I I don't think I could do that. I'd just spend the money on the sheets. Like of, nah, of I think what? they're no good though. Good. I really no, not. nah. But I think then, I need. To, I think for my next project, I need to learn to do proper static grass because I always yeah. want like a plain field, yeah, yeah. and you can't do it with tufts. It just doesn't cut the mustard. So that's some yeah. my to do list to learn for my next um, silly elf. Fork Fox is saying in the chat. Um, oh, it's like a shot from a graphic novel. Sorry, I thought I read that as it is a shot from a graphic novel. I didn't know, it. but um, I assume you mean the 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 towel a gore gorn thing um but yeah but yeah mega 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 cool. love, love that, that. stowage stowage on the beetle with the little two i know right bears. bit of bar mm. like like is it is it post it's just oh what's that was it tales from the oh my mind's gone blank now it's gonna be a crap story 
it's really famous <laughs> really famous sci-fi art it's like a normal scene and then it, there'll be some monolithic sci-fi structure in it or a robot <laughs> in it or something tales from the something they did uh amazon or netflix did a series on it it's beautiful tales from the loop <laughs> thank you scott you lot of legends um just <laughs> yeah uh this reminds it's me got of the knowledge back that kind of stuff um but uh here we go. It looks like one of the Marque models on the truck bed. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, right. Last one. And instantly the X Men theme. <laughs> Speaking nice. of, uh, one of our faith people painting a model by one of our faith people. Um, and a nice way to round it out, really. Uh, yeah. Cracking job on the leather as well. Mm. That was what first when we first saw this the box art by mark it was the leather that got me like everyone was like just juicing themselves over the jumper but i was like that leather jacket is mint um i think they did a private coaching and i'm guessing it's from from that and then he finished it so yeah but yeah, i know yeah. i know that on jared's travels he uh he did smc and then stayed in europe all the way till monty a bit like eric yeah. uh but yeah he did some private coaching with mark uh which is awesome Still want to do that myself. Go out to Spain next year. That's on the to-do list. Nice. Yeah. yeah, it's Logan, right? It's supposed to be Logan, yeah? Yeah. 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 I assume so, yeah. But it has yeah. to be the 90s animated music one. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, it's not legit. No. Yeah, <laughs> good times. Best theme song Second ever. best cartoon. Second best. Behind what? Jason and the Wheeled Warriors. Marshall Brave Star. What? Jason and the Wheeled Warriors is the best cartoon theme show of any show. 100%. Do a comp in Scotland. What have you had? I'll show you it. You'll like it. Scotland. Common Ground Games is a good venue. I've done some classes up there. That was a good one. Uh, do they, uh... be something nice, didn't there, in Edinburgh or something? Or... Oh, my Edinburgh is sick place to do a comp. Yeah, Edinburgh is amazing. My passport's run out. Can't go. Thanks for that. Um, <laughs> can't go to can't, can't leave the country, mate. I can't leave the country. Why? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Passport. I'm pretty sure you can get to Edinburgh, bud. Don't worry. Uh, it's just looking for excuses not to go. <laughs> yeah, the real right. There's no there's no competition to go to anyway, so we're fine. Um, right, that I think will wrap it up. So yeah, thanks guys. A uh, bit of a shorter one, like I said, uh, this week, uh, but nice to to make sure we got it in as well. Um, if you have got any uh, particular artists you'd like us to take a look at or creators in general or topics you'd fancy us discussing, um, then you can get in touch with us uh, in all the normal ways. Uh, we will talk to you a little bit over the next few shows between now and the end of the year, how we're going to change things for next year. Um, we're conscious that we haven't managed to hit that every two week thing that we wanted to with this season. Um, so we're just going to look at how we can freshen it up a bit, how we can change it, how we can make sure we can make sure we bring out uh consistent uh shows and whatnot for you to enjoy listening to but we do appreciate you sticking with us um so anything you guys wanted to add yeah uh um, more memes please but at the moment the memes that i'm getting either i'm gonna be really honest not interesting or fucking horrific Really, <laughs> so, so much so that they're so bad, I, I can't show them on here, or they're a bit boring. So, I need something that's I've spicy. said no to every single one. <laughs> yeah, I, I need something spicy, but that's not going to get us absolutely blacklisted from every yeah. like internet thing ever. So, we can't be cancelled, guys. I don't want to be cancelled, but I don't want it to be boring. So, that is my challenge for everybody send me something that's funny, but not for God's sake, don't get us cancelled. Right. All right. Well, that sounds good. Um, yeah, good one. And Matt, um, I hope your uh, continued journey along double-digit TikTok. Uh, in weeks. I can't believe this. I thought you were a busy guy. I'm not going to feel I'm bad at all now by messaging I just, you, asking you to do stuff anymore. It sits anymore. there. Um, it sits now on my phone. I'm just like that. More hours a week. Um, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Bad. Unbelievable. But well done, mate. Big, big, big moves. Um, where are the memes? Just send them into wherever. Uh, send them to me on we'll, Instagram. We'll, we'll make sure, but send them to Rich on uh, Army of Test Models. Uh, and, and yeah. Get it. So, yeah, Matt will continue his recovery. Next week, we will be back with the MPO Awards. Uh, and then we are rattling rapidly towards the end of the year show. So, chaps, thanks as always. Chat, you're amazing. Take care. We'll see you next time.